Hey there, and welcome to The Gathering YouTube. My name's Maddie, and I'm our online pastor. If this is your first time checking out our channel, welcome. Be sure to head over and click that subscribe button. Messages like the one you're about to watch premiere here every Sunday at 10 a.m. alongside a whole bunch of additional content. Or if you've been hopping around our channel for a while, maybe you've checked out some other videos, I wanna invite you to fill out a connect card that lets me know that you're here and gives me the opportunity to reach out and say hello. With that, enjoy the message. Hi everyone, welcome to The Gathering. It's good to have you in worship. Really quickly before we get started, uh, I wanna just celebrate something with you all. Uh, this weekend, my new book, The Methodist Book of Daily Prayer came out. If you ordered one online, it should be shipping uh, this weekend. And I just wanna uh, say that I'm really excited about this and I wanna thank all of you that have supported me along the way. This is just a really simple daily devotion and prayer book for any of you that wanna try to connect with God uh, each day and don't know where to start. So I, I certainly hope that you'll get a copy. This Thursday evening, I'm gonna have a, a launch event here at the McCausland site. And I would love for all of you to come, especially if you're around St. Louis. Uh, we'll have copies of the book that you can buy. Maddie's gonna interview me. I'm just gonna talk just a little bit about the book. It should be a fun evening. I'd love to have your support. So come on out on Thursday night uh, and pick up a copy of the Methodist Book of Daily Prayer. And again, thanks to all of you uh, that supported me in, in the journey of writing it. Uh, share it with someone that you think might be interested. Okay, uh, I was once doing a Bible study on what's probably one of the hardest passages in the Bible. It's where Jesus says, you know, love your enemies. You, you all have, have heard this. And I remember someone asking me, Matt, how is it that I'm supposed to like have affection for an enemy, someone who wants to hurt me or positive feelings for someone who wants to hurt me? And, and the answer to that is we're not. Jesus isn't asking us to have a positive feelings towards them or affection towards that person. We get confused about this because we often think of love as like an emotion or a feeling. But when Jesus talks about love, love is an action. It's something that we do. And therefore, love is a choice that we can make about how to act towards other people, even those that we might deeply disagree with. Today, we're continuing our sermon series called One. Finding unity in a divided world. And if you were here last week, I talked about just the trouble with the word unity. A lot of us kind of, I'm not sure I like that. And I talked about what unity is not. I said unity is not uniformity. It doesn't mean that we're all the same. Unity is not unanimity. We don't all have to agree on everything. Unity is not union. We don't all have to be together. We can have boundaries and separateness. But then I ended last week by saying, well, what is unity then? And I defined it this way. I said, unity is maintaining a posture of love across difference. In other words, unity is accomplished when we, when we make this choice to, to love even those that we deeply disagree with. And remember, love is a choice. It's a choice about how to act towards those that we are deeply divided from. And so today I want to flesh out how we do this. What does this actually look like? What are those practices that help us to, to love, especially those that we find really difficult to deal with in, in our lives? And to do this, we're going to just look back at Paul, that Ephesians passage and another passage in Romans. But the passage I read last week, Paul gives us the practices right there if we just pay attention to it. And it's actually kind of simple, at least simple to read, a little harder to do. Paul says this. He says, conduct yourselves with all humility, gentleness, and patience. Accept each other with love and make every effort to preserve the unity of the Spirit with the peace that ties you together. Humility, gentleness, patience. So we're going to talk about what those mean. But before we do, here's what I'd like you to do. I think oftentimes we talk about this stuff in the abstract, but I want you to call to mind right now someone that you really struggle with. It could be a particular person in your life, a friend, a relative, family member, someone you work with, someone at school, on your team, someone you see on social media. Maybe it's a category of people that you find really difficult to deal with. And for now, I want us to set aside the, the really extreme situations. I think those are something a little bit different. We'll talk about next week. But I'm, I'm just talking about kind of everyday people that we, that we really struggle with for some reason. Maybe it's political differences, value differences, the way they act. Maybe it's just someone who grates on us. So, so call a person to mind. You should be able to do this. 
Okay, so, so what are those practices then that allow us to better love that person that you're thinking about in your head? And as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with that person. Well, the first way that Paul says that we love across difference is, is by practicing humility. Paul writes this a little bit elsewhere about humility. This is in Romans. He says, because of the grace that God gave me, I can say to each of you, don't think of yourselves more highly than you ought to think. Instead, be reasonable, since God has measured out a portion of faith to each one of you. We have many parts in one body, but the parts don't all have the same function. Then a little bit later, he says, consider everyone as equals. Don't think that you're better than anyone else. Instead, associate with people who have no status. Don't think you're so smart. I I love the straightforwardness of that passage. I mean, Paul's pretty clear. He says, look, Stop thinking so highly of yourselves. Associate with people who have no status. Consider other people equal. Don't think that you're, you're so smart. What is Paul trying to get at here? Well, I think Paul is warning us not to think that our perspective is the whole perspective. Not, not to think that our truth is the whole truth, that our understanding is the, is the whole understanding. But, but he even says, he says, be reasonable about this. Remember that, that God has given you a part but maybe not the whole. And what that means is you might have a part and someone else might have a a different part. This is humility. In other words, humility is an awareness that you can't see the whole picture. That's how I think Paul defines humility here. You know, I used to have a pastor who, you know, sort of humorously would ask me all the time, you know, Matt, what wrong opinion do you hold? And of course, it was a playful way of pointing out that certainly you can't see the whole truth. There must be something that you can't see. Humility is an awareness that you can't see the whole picture. It's recognizing that there are limits to your own perspective and maybe remembering that you don't hold the whole truth. This is really important because I think so often when we confront people that we really struggle with, that we really disagree with, that think really differently than us, we immediately jump to right and wrong. I mean, that's just how our brains work. Either or, like my political opinion is right, yours must be wrong. My preferences are right, yours must be wrong. My lifestyle and the way I live my life is right, yours must be wrong. You know, the the way I parent or the way I conduct myself at school or the way that I do this job is right, yours is wrong. I mean, we do this all the time. But what Paul is saying here, I think, is just, you know, maybe humility is saying that the truth is often bigger than my perspective or your perspective. And what that means is it might be possible that this isn't a situation of right and wrong, but but simply that each of us see a part of a bigger whole. That, that, That maybe it's not right and wrong, but instead our viewpoints are each partial. I'll give you an example. I remember years ago, I, I was uh, talking with a coworker, there, and this, this coworker and I ha- have a good relationship, but this was sort of a, fr- a frustrating moment. And in this frustrating moment, I was really expressing, like, I didn't think the person was essentially working hard enough. They were leaving a lot on the table, and uh, they were falling short in a, a couple of, of areas. This person was frustrated because they thought that I had really unrealistic expectations. And here we were, like, going like this. I thought I was right. Uh, They thought they were right. Well, I I remember going home, and and over (laughs) the course of the evening, it just sort of occurred to me, you know, Matt, it's possible that actually both of you are right. It's possible for... for (laughs) for both of us to be right, that, that indeed maybe the person wasn't working as hard as they could and, and maybe they were falling short and uh, maybe I do have unrealistic expectations. Maybe it, it wasn't a matter of right and wrong, but, but that we were each coming at this from our own unique perspective, our own unique background, and each of us was seeing a part uh, of the whole picture. Friends, the same can be true with some of those people that you really struggle with. Humility doesn't ask us to sort of invalidate our opinion or completely agree with the other person, but instead, humility just means being open to the possibility that maybe you're both seeing a different part of a greater whole, that that maybe both of you 
have some validity to, to what you think. It's making space for the possibility that maybe the other person, because their unique background or experiences or perspectives, sees something that you can't see. So when it comes to that other person, are you practicing humility? Are you making room for the possibility that maybe they see something that you don't? Loving across difference requires humility. Second thing Paul says is loving across difference requires gentleness. And he says, conduct yourselves with all humility, gentleness, and patience. I mean, gentleness is kind of a weird word. I mean, even weirder, the Bible used to translate this as meekness or meek. I always laugh because I remember Charles Barkley, you know, the, the basketball player and now the commentator. <laughs> he once said this. He said, you know, the meek may inherit the earth, uh, but they won't get the ball. <laughs> In other words, we have this idea that to be meek or to be gentle is sort of to be submissive or weak, letting other people walk all over you. It can mean not speaking up or refraining from using your voice. It doesn't seem virtuous. It actually seems dangerous, especially, you know, when we thrust it upon people who haven't traditionally had a voice. But again, this is a misunderstanding. Gentleness is not about staying quiet, but it's about how you use your voice. Gentleness is not about being powerless. It's about how you use your power. It's about how we express what it is that we feel and think. Listen again to Paul in Romans. He says this. He says, bless people who harass you. Bless and don't curse them. Be happy with those who are happy. Cry with those who are crying. Don't pay back anyone for their evil actions with evil actions. But show respect for what everyone else believes is good. Again, easy to, to listen to, really difficult to do. But, but gentleness, at least for Paul, is literally, he says, refraining from cursing those that we disagree with. I don't just mean literally. I mean, don't curse. That would be good. But more broadly, it, it means not having ill intent or not reacting with like harshness or, or anger or vitriol. To put it bluntly, like don't be a jerk. Don't be mean. Express yourself, but, but do it in a way that respects the other person's humanity. Not their opinion, but their humanity. And do this even if they're not showing you the same respect. I think that's key here. You know, what Paul says is you don't have to treat someone else the way they treat you. You don't have to answer someone else the way that they answer you. I think all of us kind of know what this means. I mean, after all, how often does somebody do something to you that you think is so disrespectful that it justifies you being disrespectful back to them? Or, or how often is it that someone's mean to you and it kind of gives you permission to be mean back to them? Someone yells at us, we feel permission then to yell back at them. Someone acts childish towards us, we feel permission then to, to act childish back towards them. And gentleness, I think for Paul, is refraining from this sort of tit-for-tat kind of behavior. You did this to me, I'm going to do this back to you. Gentleness isn't holding back, but it's expressing ourselves without being mean. That's what gentleness is. And I, th I think this is a, a, a simple word that a lot of us need to, to hear. So when it comes to that person you're thinking about, are, are you gentle? In other words, do you treat them with a fundamental respect or do you just get into this back and forth? Do you escalate the conflict or the confrontation by matching their tone and behavior? Do you get frustrated and therefore you react the same way that they're reacting to you? Or when you speak to them, do you speak your truth but, but do it in a way that they can hear? Without accusation, without assumption, without harshness or meanness. To put it bluntly, with that other person, are you acting like a jerk when you express your opinion to them? Loving across difference requires practicing gentleness. And then lastly, Paul says that loving across difference requires patience. Now, now patience actually in this context, I don't think means waiting. We usually think of patience as waiting. But in the Old Testament, patience is often translated being slow to anger. And it's actually something that God is with us. God is patient or slow to anger with us. It says this in the Psalms, the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger 
and abounding in steadfast love. So patience means being slow to anger. I love that definition of it. And and what the scripture says is this is how God is with you, and therefore this is how God wants you to be with other people, especially those that you really struggle with, that you you have differences with. But of course, often we, we don't do this. Why? Because these other people frustrate us. And when people frustrate us, we react. Oftentimes, we're quick to react. We're quick to anger. And I don't just mean getting mad. I mean all sorts of things. We're, we're quick to get mad. We're quick to start arguing. We're quick to react to them. We're quick to respond to them. We're quick to give them our feelings and what we think about a certain situation. We're really quick to jump on anyone or anything that we find wrong, that we disagree with, or that we find offensive. I mean, I think the the most obvious example of this is just social media. And it's such a trap because social media is 24-7 stuff flying at us that that comes from all sorts of different places and all sorts of different perspectives. There's a ton on there to disagree with. And, And the other problem is it is so easy to immediately respond. That's why a lot of you know that I have like a 24-hour rule. When, when someone says something to me or puts something out there that I find really tough, really disrespectful, that I really disagree with, that I think is really dangerous, uh, I try not to immediately respond. I try to give myself 24 hours before I respond or react to that thing. And that's about patience. It's about being slow to to anger or to react in a way that might not be best. Slowing down gives you space, right? It gives you space to consider what to say. It gives you space maybe to calm your emotions. Patience might give you kind of a greater perspective. And sometimes that space can help you to see that, that maybe you don't even have to respond at all. This is something I've learned. You know, I have to sit with sometimes other pastors whose opinions I just I really struggle with. Not, not just struggle with, but I think their opinions are actually harmful to some of the very people that I love. And listening sometimes to them talk or argue their case, like I so want to respond in the moment. And I, I always remember, I have kind of a, a mantra that someone told me once. You know, they, they said to me once, you know, Matt, you're not responsible for responding or engaging everything that you disagree with. Friends, just remember that. I mean, be slow to to anger, but also remember you are not responsible for responding or engaging everything or everyone that you disagree with. You don't have to engage. And so with that person who really frustrates you or that you disagree with, are you being patient? Do you slow down? Are, Are you... Are you less quick to react? Maybe give them space to be different. Give them space to be wrong. Give them space to things, see things differently. Give them space to be off. And give yourself space to calm your own emotions, to consider how it is that you might want to, to react. Give yourself space for your spirit to settle before you immediately respond to them. And maybe when you, when you do, when you slow down, you realize that you don't always have to engage that person or that family member, that uh, thing on Facebook. You don't always have to engage or respond to everyone or everything that you disagree with. You know, therapists often say in marriage that You know, there are problems to be solved and there are tensions to be managed. Sometimes patience allows us to see that that this person's perspective is not a problem to be solved. They're just a tension to be managed. And therefore, we do not always have to engage. Conduct yourselves with all humility, gentleness, and patience. Accept each other with love. I think that's key there. Conducting ourselves in this way helps us to just accept another for who they are and what they are. I'll just close with this. Paul closes that Romans passage that I was reading by saying, if possible, to the best of your ability, live at peace with all people. I'll close with this thought. I remember Desmond Tutu, some of you, know that he was my professor. He, he had to live with, with deep 
people who he had deep, significant differences with. And, and I remember him saying something to the effect of love takes courage, love takes work, but love is a choice we can make even with people that we deeply disagree with. Unity is maintaining a posture of love even across difference. Not a feeling, not an emotion, but it's a certain way of acting with those that we disagree with. And it includes humility, remembering that, that maybe we each are seeing part of a greater whole. It takes gentleness, just not being a jerk, not being mean. It, it, it requires patience, being slow to anger, and remembering that we do not have to immediately react or, or maybe respond at all to everything that we disagree with. Unity is maintaining a posture of love across difference, and these practices are how we get there. So this week, try to find a way, a situation, a person to practice humility, gentleness, and patience. Let's pray. Gracious and, and holy God, I know that there are people in our lives that just really get under our skin. They really frustrate us. Maybe they're even really hurtful or their opinions are cut against our very being. But God, help us. Help us to reflect on your wisdom, which says it is possible to love them. Not to like them, not have positive affection for them, but, but to act in a, in a loving way, even across differences. So God, just help us this week. Help us to, to find a way to, to be humble, to be gentle, to be patient. And as we do, God, I pray that, that we would feel a greater sense of peace, even in the presence of people that, that we disagree with or dislike. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for checking out our message. Before you go, be sure to head over to our channel and click the subscribe button. And if you liked the video, feel free to share it with a friend, invite them to come and watch with you. If you have been checking out our channel for a little while, I also wanna invite you to fill out a connect card. I would love the chance to reach out and say hello. Now, every time we gather together, either in person or online, we celebrate in a moment of generosity as a church. We believe that when we're generous with what we have, we both leave ourselves open to what God wants to do in our life, and we get to participate in what God is doing in the lives of others. If you're interested in learning more about our church and the way we support our community and beyond it, you can head to our description and check out our website. The ways to give are gonna be up on the screen as well as a link in our description, and I wanna invite you to participate in that now. And friends, with that, that's the message. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in listening and singing along to the Gathering Worship team, you can find those videos as well as a virtual communion experience on our channel's homepage. Until next time, go in peace.